how do we cleanse ourselves of harmful energies and protect against them? Um, do you want to go first? I'll start, and I actually want to make a note before I start, because this yeah. is actually two different questions in one for me. So, the, so how do I protect myself against harmful energy and cleanse them when there is something, someone or something outside myself that means to do harm? And one is, how do I handle the fact that I really want to hurt people on a regular basis? Um, okay. Um, because those qualify as harmful energies, and just bottling that up leads to non-trivial issues later. Right. Um, <laughs> you've seen that, that's fun. Yes, yes, um, I have seen that. So, first, quest first question, which I think is probably the one that was meant, um... Start with lots and lots of shielding. Um, and in my case, I most of my shielding is wrapped up in the belief that none of what people are throwing at me to hurt me is actually going to stick. And essentially believe that hard enough and it works. Um, which is kind of cheating, but is also highly effective. Um, as far as cleansing, because, okay, regardless of like artful dodging of active negative harmful intent there's a certain malaise that sh that i wind up with every day when i get home from the office because i can't really avoid it it's sticks to you there. from your office environment yeah um and i've actually been struggling with this a little bit um because it also plays into my neurochemistry and they bounce back and forth and are really fun. Things I've had luck with in the past, um, showering, um, because it provides a clear transition. Water is a cleansing and grounding force to begin with. Um, the soap that I use happens to be a black clay soap, which is also a cleansing right, and grounding it's, thing. It's Irish black more mud with volcanic salt in it's it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but there are also days when I'm dealing with depression and the idea of showering is just way too much. Um, what I've been having success with lately has actually been music. Um, and this is sort of a personal thing for me, but I've been finding, I've been having success with, so, there's there's an idea that essentially matter and energy are forms of vibration so it's magic so sound and you and the idea of sound cleansings is actually reasonably widespread the most sort of infamous example of this being get in this giant crystal singing bowl and i'm going to play it and you will be cleansed which sounds like an incredibly intense experience, but I don't own a giant singing bowl. So instead, you do own a little singing bowl. I do own a little singing bowl. Um, but I've had luck with either getting out my violin and playing it away, or with listening to certain classical music. Paganini has been good for this. Paganini is amazing. Um, it's my second favorite composer. Yeah. Okay, um, so vibration. Yes. So for me, water or vibration. Um, and water drumming on your body is a kind of is a kind of vibration in and of itself. Cool. Um, Have you combined these to great effect for you? Like, do you play the music while you shower, or are you like me? And if you're playing music while you're in the shower, you're convinced someone's taking it to murder you. No, I don't have <laughs> I don't have that problem. I just don't generally combine the two of them because electronics, running water, bad combination. Um, you say to the person who regularly reads on her cell phone in the bath. <laughs> yeah, but baths work better for that than showers. <laughs> um, All right. So, um, if I was answering this from like the folk magic perspective, it would be something like mix yourself up some witch's salt in some holy water and go dump it on your head while jumping backwards underneath a new moon. Um, and that's definitely advice 
I've given others when they have come to me as a, you know, as a cunning or clever worker and they've been like, well, how would you recommend that I do this? Well, and it sort of is a, are you talking about cleansing off everyday yuck or are mm -hmm. you talking about this is an extreme case? Because, I mean, there's, there's all manner of methods from Appalachian work, you know, rub an egg all over yourself. Yeah. And it pulls it into the egg, or or um, or burn snakeskin sheds and cicada shells and, and cocoons and things, or um, powdered eggshell. And the idea is that you are essentially burning these things that represent shedding one skin and getting another. Um, but honestly, in my everyday life, I hardly ever bother with that kind of thing. Um, mostly what I do, I think of as an internal reset. Um, I go, you know, obviously something felt like it stuck. Something felt like it shook me up a little bit. And I go talk with my ancestors about why it's bothering me. And when I confront it, I can shed it. Um, you know, I take a look at it and say, why does this feel like it's sticking? Why does it feel like it's it's messing me up a little bit. Um, what's what's it hooked on? Because mm -hmm. something has to have a hook to oh, stick past my shields. Um, I meditate every day, um, and I don't meditate in the you know as someone who's worked. I'm trying to figure out how to put this without insulting a tradition I truly adore. I've studied yoga yeah, and your Tai Chi of, your extensively. Of meditation does not necessarily look like meditation. No, it is not. It is not um, what's called empty-minded or open-minded meditation, where you try and think of nothing. Um, I think in webs, where I essentially look at the problem and I examine all the different sources and I pull it apart and I examine it and I say, you know, like. Why is this bothering me so much? Why is it sticking to me? And then I snip those connections. And sometimes I do that, you know, with literal scissors or a knife. Um, but most of the time, just right. looking at why, it and why being are you like, awake at two in the morning in the kitchen with a knife. <laughs> um, most of the time, just looking at it and saying, you know, I did not give you permission to affect me this way. I refuse you that permission get thee gone. Um, the other way that I do, I was taught by a teacher, which is that you pick up a handful of salt and you just scrub your body with it. Um, I do that one in the bath Right, you can combine this with the shower. Um, <laughs> I take a really, really hot bath, so hot it makes my skin like lobster red and I scrub myself with salt. Um, most things do not survive that. Uh, a couple times a year I do big cleansing and I want to call them like re-sanctification, mm -hmm. rededication ceremonies where these certain guiding stars that I've dedicated my life to, that I've fixated on and a couple times a year like um, in when thaw comes around mm -hmm. and the water from the snow yeah. starts running, I go out and I find a thaw waterfall and I bathe in the waterfall. Um, it's freezing. At Midsummer, which is when I had my naming day, um, I take torches out into the water and I hold them and I rededicate myself and I dunk myself in the water. And so I have these rededication baptisms. And every time I do those, I sort of say, like, I'm washing away what didn't serve me. The bits of myself that held me back, the bits of myself that held me down, and anything that somebody stuck on me that held me down. I actually do something comparable at All Hallows. Mm -hmm. um, Which is our our New Year's. Right. Um, essentially saying I want everything that didn't serve me or that was harmful to stay back. And in fact, if I'm really feeling vindictive, I'll offer it up to the month. Um, <laughs> Of course you do. So, <laughs> um, you know what? People should know better. You know, we have the um, the wolf, blood, moon, lunar eclipse coming up, and one of the things I intend to do is reaffirm the fact that the darkness inside of me is a source of power, not a source of fear, that, you know, the impulses within me that people are like, oh, well, you're a very angry, spiteful person, you should fix that, that those are a source of, of getting me out of bed in the morning and giving me the, the verve to face the world, and I'm going to let the, the lunar eclipse kind of wash away the voices that are telling me I should be ashamed of, of who I am right now. So that's a cleansing ritual. Um.
So my general day-to-day -day protection um, is honestly, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of based on almost arrogance, um, but sort of a belief that what I'm being exposed to can't actually harm me unless I let it and I choose not to let it. Um, when I'm intentionally entering a more magically dangerous or risky situation, whether that's going out and picking fights while head walking, or whether that's going into like an exorcism or home cleansing, um, I do... Oh, I need all to know that somebody left message that we should sacrifice a small lamb. And the thing is, I have totally killed a goat for my magical practices and eaten that goat. But it wasn't to Satan, because Satan's the Archangel of Temptation. And uh, also I don't work with him, because I think the whole, like, I'm going to tempt you to do bad so that my abuse of God can punish you for it is really messed up. But I would totally sacrifice a goat to, say, Lucifer, who is the um, light bringer. Um, but I don't worship Lucifer, and I think he'd get the wrong message from me giving him a goat. I was Sorry. saying something, mm -hmm. and I don't actually remember what. You were talking about... Oh, um, more intense protection. Um, so... If I'm doing the hedge walking version, it's literally constructing myself armor, impenetrable barriers, things like that, because I lucid dream and I can lucid dream in a shared dream space too. It works. Um, we did get another question. If it's we'll something finish with the how to protect ourselves one. Okay. If it's something like um, going into a house for an exorcism, so. I actually find that essentially meditating and increasing my level of self-awareness is more effective than any shielding technique I've ever tried. So you go for gnosis go, as protection. I go for gnosis as protection. I know... You are a drunken monk. Yes. Um, I go for, I know myself, I know what is around me, and I know that now something is trying to influence me. And that means I've identified it and can discard and can discard or disregard it. Um, it's actually a fairly similar approach that I take to um, to self protection in social situations of trying to just be fully aware of everything that's happening and the implications thereof. As an aside, one of the things that Ian sometimes suffers from is um, data overwhelming him. Yeah, like having taken in too much information and needing to go and like deprive himself from information right. I, incoming. I will absolutely go sit in a dark room with either complete silence or like low level ambient music not doing anything for a while because I get overloaded. Um, there so are, just defi that, that there are definitely... definitely drawbacks to this method. So, um, okay, I'm gonna touch on one that I started doing about two years ago and the problems that um, <laughs> developed from this. Um, to start with, I don't do solid state shielding, which is what a lot of the psychic arts books tell you yeah. to do. Like, I used to. Imagine a, a mirror, imagine a wall, because I found that it cut me off from feeling the energies around me and also bubbled me so effectively that like other people couldn't feel or sense me. And it turns out that if you do that really effectively, people feel uncomfortable around you. And I work as a counselor. Like right. that's one of the things I do. They have to be able to feel that I'm empathizing, that I'm sympathetic, that I actually give a fuck. And that if you just feel like a mirror to them, it's not good. So, um, after that, I went for the I am the scariest thing in any room, um, and I refuse. I went for, like, I refuse anything sticking to me. And that worked really, really well for a long time, except that it turns out that keeping myself at that simmering state of, like, I am ready for a fight, nothing can stick to me, um, I can do anything, uh was actually damaging to my interpersonal relationships. Um, I was just spoiling for a fight all the time. 
Um, so now I use that in certain circumstances, like if I'm going to go hang out with other pagans, um, but not all the time. Um, the next thing I tried was um, what I ended up calling universal shielding. Um, mm. Basically, I believe in an amoral universe. I don't believe in this. It's just my personal beliefs. I don't believe that it's on our side, but I also don't think it's against us either. But I do think that it has a bit of itself that it uses to maintain the illusion we all move around in and um, and fix it when it gets broken. I call this a universal particle. Um, and I think of it as the, the needle and thread that stitch together the tapestry we all walk around on, which I do believe is kind of a, a holographic pro projection over nothingness. I'm sorry, I'm um, having a Doctor Who moment. Good. Now, it's nothing like any of that, but if it I'm helps... I'm summing up. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do this in two minutes. I, you know, I sort of went, well, I am the universe, and the universe is in me, and there is no separation between me and this universal stuff other than one I believe in, and so I'm just going to wrap myself in the maintenance particle, the, the protection and maintenance particle, that yeah. which prevents the whole world from blinking out, that which prevents the world from turning to nothingness, that which maintains balance. And this worked really, really well for a while, but I stopped giving a fuck. I stopped caring whether something was good or bad. Um, I spent so much time in that headspace, building those shields, mm -hmm. that I stopped caring. The clean water for children was the same to me as the water full of parasites because it all just was, yeah. all that is, is. Um, so that wasn't working. Um, and I finally ended up where I'm at now. And I'm sorry, I know that was a bit of a ride. Uh, I, when I realized this about myself, I went down and I asked myself, why did the universe bother making us if it's amoral and it sees no difference between us and the parasites? And the answer I came to, and this is just my personal belief, was it wanted to experience being us. It wanted to learn what it was like being us. Um, and created us because we could understand what the universe was, we could understand what we are, and that experience was unique and valuable to it. Um, it may be being repeated on some other planet in the distant solar system, but it was still unique and valuable. And so I wrapped yep, myself in that belief of, I, if, if the universe is amoral, if it does not care whether I win or fail, if it does not care whether I help and heal or whether I harm and am harmed, then I will care. And because I am the universe itself, my caring is enough to wrap myself in protection and power and get me through helping others. So I am wrapped in the surety of my purpose. Yeah, I can't actually make that work for me. There's, um... I don't know if that made any sense. I hope it did. I'm still meditating on these concepts, so... Right, still making progress I was on doing it. the other version up to about three months ago, so... Um... Yeah. yeah.